Good morning and thanks for joining us on the Thursday edition of uh, TVC Breakfast. I am Veronica Dan Ikoi and I am not here alone. I have Power Mike Okwache. <laughs> <laughs> You're taking me back to my radio days. <laughs> nice to see you, Veronica. It's, it's a great morning. It's good to have you here it's this morning. morning. Really nice. Right. Yeah. Interesting day, but uh, I'm certain that uh, a majority of us will not forget two years ago, October 2020. Oh, 20, oh. The who NSAS would forget? Protest. Who would forget? Um, it's two years now, mm. but uh, it's still very, very fresh mm. in our minds yeah. because some of us were at work. We know we knew what was happening uh, because we're following up. TVC was bringing, you know, blow by blow account of what was happening with yeah. regards to the protest. Mm -hmm. The protest was about bringing an end to pol police brutality, mm -hmm. which was something that was being done in good faith. Yeah. But along the line, you know, we saw how uh, hoodlums hijacked the protest. Mm -hmm. You know, a, a, a cross section of Nigerian youths came out because of certain persons who have been victims of uh, the ends, the SARS police at that time. And so they came out to say, you know what, we can no longer handle this matter. Mm. We have to put an end. And so a protest ensued, which is the right of any Nigerian. But at the end of the day, when uh, the, pre uh, the governor of the state saw what was going on, he called for a curfew, which a majority of them yeah. defied and still went on to protest. And that was how we saw the military coming to the picture mm -hmm. to address uh, the situation. Yeah. And unfortunately, uh, based on uh, the judicial seating, the panel seating in Lagos that confirmed that certain persons, you know, died in the protest and all of that. And, you know, certain compensations were made. But we won't also forget mm -hmm. those who lost their properties mm -hmm. in the course of this uh, mm -hmm. protest. You know, shops were looted, um, offices burnt, which TVC was one of. Mm -hmm. Our office was burnt. And uh, some of us were here that day, you know, oh, yeah. running around Lagos, you know, trying to take cover. Yeah, if the, the experience that time, I believe no Lagosian is going to forget that in a hurry. Yes. What's what happened uh, through October uh, 2020. Uh, we may talk about it now in passing, but I tell you that some people Have no are still suffering from some psychological uh, uh, blow from that time. Yeah, uh, and... Uh, those uh, for you for for you and uh, other colleagues of ours Morayo and the others who on that morning uh, came face to face with those with those uh, hoodlums uh, one would say that uh, it's not an experience anybody would like to witness again absolutely uh, and as a whole as a nation have we learned from what happened what that's led to question. it and how that's a big question from the side of government from the side of the youth have we learned anything as to how we should move forward when we have these kind of challenges? Of course, from, from, from a, a perspective, one would say, when youths become conscious, there is nothing they cannot achieve. Not just youths, Nigerians, or any human being. The moment you become, remember in, even in the holy books where they talked about the Tower of Babel, mm -hmm. where uh, uh, the people wanted to come together to build a tower that would get to heaven. It was because of the unity of the people. There was nothing they couldn't have achieved. Mm. It was God, as far as the records were concerned, who had to come down by himself and say, hey, these people, <laughs> these people. <laughs> if you allow them, they will come to heaven. You know, so. Whatever the thing is. But the point there is, how do we channel those kind of energies to something positive mm. for the country? On the other hand, NSAS represented a metaphor of how disconnected government is from the reality at mm. that time. What is the government doing differently? We know that the SARS had been disbanded at the time, and mm. it still, it still remain, uh, it remains banned. But beyond all that, has the police been reformed in such a way that it is in a better position to engage the people when there is an issue Okay, well, on one of the papers today, I understand the president is telling police officers to stop harassing uh, people with laptops. Uh, people with laptops. Mm. So it, it, it takes you back to the same thing. These are, it, it, in fact, for the president to make that pronouncement or make that, uh, give that urge right now, it tells you that those things are still happening. Yeah. Now, somebody is driving in a certain kind of car and he has a certain kind of hair and he's dressed in a certain kind of way and you conclude that that person must have been uh, uh, someone who is involved in internet fraud. fraud. 
it's, it's, it's wrong mm -hmm. to assume like that. So the point there is, someone can still be involved in internet fraud and be dressed in suit and live, live in an office or goes to a corporate office and does the whatever he, do, he, whatever Absolutely. he does. So the issue there is, I feel that the police, the EFCC, and all those agencies who are concerned should upgrade themselves to the level where you can even track what's happening remotely. Right. If I don't, if I don't have, I don't have to get into a hotel to round up everybody and say, "Oh, everybody here, come!" You know, I, we understand something right. is going. There's right. a way you can block these things from happening. You know. Remotely but, but, but one so thing on. is key that you can see some level of engagement, especially on social media platforms mm. between the police and a lot of youth on social media platforms where people raise concerns about certain things mm -hmm. and you get a response from them and, you know, they follow up on some of these mm. issues. I believe that it is one step at a time that we will get there someday, somehow. Mm. But we uh, need to move on. Uh, anyway, we, ha we have to move on. <laughs> <laughs> Let's bring you the news update. On this day two years ago, Lagos witnessed one of its darkest days during NSAT's protests. The protests, which morphed from social media campaigns into street demonstrations in October 2020, was triggered by the excesses of the Special Anti-Robbery Squad, a now disbanded police tactical unit notorious for cruelty against crime suspects and innocent Nigerians. We have more in this report. October 2020 started like every other day. Not many saw what the day eventually turned out to be. Massive youth protests. The excesses of the now defunct special anti-robbery squad caused so much uproar, which made the youths to vent their displeasure. The protest, largely organic, sprang up in several other areas of Lagos, with Leki and Alausa Ikeja becoming the focal point for convergence. Other states later joined the fray. Ask me the legacy that enters with, I'd say, its resilience and unity, and a new awakening, social political consciousness among young people. The demand of the youths were clearly spelled out and broken down into several points, which includes the disbandment of the special anti-robbery squad, compensations for the families of those who died under police brutality, the release of arrested protesters, and an increase in the salaries and allowances of police officers. We are back on the streets. If we do not see SARS completely abolished, we are back on the streets. Although SARS activities and general issues of police brutality, amongst other issues, were at its core, the NSAS protest quickly became a platform for demanding government's decisive action against insecurity, corruption, economic wars, and general maladministration. We want to end SARS. That's what we want. They need to go because of Apple Watch or because you refuse to unlock your phone. One shot, you're gone and you're dead. Why? We ask that if these people die and will come back next month. They're not coming back. With all the central leadership structure coordinating the protests in different parts of the country, the street demonstrations continued with the agitators widening their requests. Our side that we were dodging bullets. Many remember October 20th, 2020 as a dark period in the history of the nation where young people were allegedly killed. However, since that protest, police brutality has not left the Nigerian streets. Numerous cases of assaults and extortion by the police have been recorded, with the police force dismissing those found wanting. Why will you break it? What did I do? What did I do?